Hello everybody, welcome. This is Taro from Taro03.com. Today's Sunday, it's February 18th, 2024. It's 10.42 a.m. Simple time here in the Ozarks. This is the first mystery report um, newsletter that's been being uploaded to the 2024 Dropbox folder for mystery report subscribers, to the program subscribers, and Substack subscribers. Remember... Remember that when you support my work at Substack over here, and this is a good article to help people to see the light. It includes the conspiracy of scripture, mixing the two gospels together and this and that, and has 9-11 information in there. It's, it's like a broad overview to help people see the light. And when you support my work here, you get a free mystery report subscription. Copy my book, The Mystery Explained, attached your notification email, EPUB version. And you're going to be seeing diagrams in this presentation that come from my book, The Mystery Explained, right here. Mystery Explained is showing the paper bag version. This is what it looks like, spirit, blood, and water. This is a description, seeing God's wisdom hidden in plain sight. It's a little bit spendy because 80 color-coded diagrams, you have to use the best paper, thickest best paper or else the images bleed through the other side and uh, there's a Kindle version and a paperback version and so you can check it out over at Amazon and before we get started first newsletter for 2024 before we get started just briefly just going to show you a little bit of what's going on here. Lawlessness is abounding everywhere. It's growing, especially in the big cities. So, if you're following my Black Star reports, I've been telling you, uh, something has to be done. We're feeling less and less safe. So, we got out there. David showed up over here yesterday. I took a tumble, by the way, right over here, working on this one right here. And... I didn't realize until really until I got woke up this morning I banged my elbow and my funny bone and I'm I'm okay but I got a little taste of my feeling my mortality yesterday and it's up here on this roof right here this part of the house I don't seem to have much luck on but I was up pressure washing up top and this is where I took two spills up on the roof right in this region right here is the only place I've had difficulties so bars going up on the windows this is the side I was hoping to get uh, this was supposed to be a, a before picture and then the after but we could only get three of them done so we got these three done this was the one that I was really concerned about somebody coming through over here and so these are the, the low windows not worried about the second story windows so much Well, that's what's going on over here. That's where I am in my prep. And I wanted to mention that because the uh, there's comments made by Jill. This is a two-in-one kind of because, Jill, you wrote me a dual set of questions. And she's concerned about what she's writing about is, is Jesus seated or standing at the right hand of God? And before we get into that, then... John has done something really amazing. So before, this is a the uh, Awakened Radio series from 2012. And this started off with a Black Star report. And it was a Sunday report that I did for a bunch of Sundays in a row. And they're in order, starting off with the two Gospels, two churches, and progressing. So what John did is he downloaded them all. He weeded out the Black Star reports and just left the mystery part, the mystery report part. And there were 21 of these since he did this. How long ago was that, John? There was 21. Then he reconstituted these are the new ones. Well, they're, you know, from 2012, but you guys haven't seen them before. So 2024 subscribers, you guys got a bonus. And these videos, these, uh, well, these... This is the, the podcast type 
MP3, but lots of information in here. And Jill down below, the second article that I'm commenting on, you're right about you're having trouble with playback on these. If you ever have trouble with tr try a new browser, that's because whenever the, the link that you shared with me, it worked. It worked fine. And but I've got like six browsers. And so if you get it to the right one, then it's working. And then if you're using an old newsletter, th these links may not work. The 21 that was here because he's moved them to. I did notice that some of the links were the same somehow. But a lot of them, they have brand new links. And so you should have, if you've been having bad luck with them, you should have better luck with them now. 35 total. John, appreciate you very, very much. And John and I go back all the way, what, 2011, 2012, Terrell's Research Group. And I um, wasn't even aware that these were available still. And John rounded them up. And at some point, I want to get these, these. These are chat rooms just before COVID started. Then my plan was to do these once a week on Tuesdays. Question and answers. And the world's gone crazy since then. And my nano silver project has taken a whole bunch of time and providing customer support and and going to town with the deliveries and tracking numbers and all types of extra work. And now I'm doing daily reports. It was once a week. Now it's it's daily Monday through Thursday. And so and then prepping. And I'm just rushing around, rushing around. Hopefully my goal is to get once a week. Tuesday nights using Pal Talk or one of those. Get those once a week um, question and answer sessions going over at Pal Talk. That's my goal. I want to do that as soon as I get time. Hopefully, we can do that. The world could go crazy any minute. So, we're on the precipice of something happening. That's what it looks like. Or we could have another orbit cycle. So the the globalists, the elite, they're gonna they're gonna play their hand as we're coming to outside orbital position with the black star. That's in the first week in March, and then it won't be long after that they're gonna tip their hand, and the Earth is gonna be testifying too about what's going on. And I'll know more. That's uh. So I, that's what I want to do. That's what it's in my heart to do. But I also have to be mindful not to overload my plate, get too much load the cart too much and the whole thing winds up in the ditch so it's a balancing act that I'm playing right now and it's tough to be careful yeah, moving forward so um, this is a first report and last year we had four reports we year before that we had six year before that we just had four 2020 and I'm gonna do my best to have half a dozen of these by the time we get to the end of the year, if we have another orbit cycle under our belts. So this is uh, the first one for Jill. Gary, you were actually next in line, but I, the last one was for you. I think the one before that was for you. So I skipped a little bit down and we and found Jill's. And if you look at the date here, see October 14, 2023. So Jill did receive the reply. This is the updated, upgraded, with, with more links version. And... Um, Jill, I'll send you a link to this right after this video. Appreciate you guys' support. Without you guys, there would be no mystery report program or anything. So let's, uh, with that, let's, let's start right here. I want to kind of take my time. And I've got lots of, uh, these links that have been added are still pulled up. And so I can take a little bit of time with some of this and read the actual verses. And what's going on. So if you're unaware, The Mystery Explained, that was written in 2005. It was published 2017. The Lord God began showing me the three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water in the scriptures from the time I was young. And it's developed, developed, developed over time. And he's showing me more and more and more. And then the uh, I wrote the book. The Mystery Explained, never published it, but then you guys, I was actually giving it away for free, and then some of you guys were printing it out, and you you wrote to me, and you said that you had printed out this big giant book of mine, and I realized 
that I needed to do what had to be done to get it published. And so, and off we go with the, uh, the mystery explained, seeing God's wisdom hidden in plain sight. Some people can see it. Lord God has to appoint you to see it. And the majority of people just can't see it. It's just the, that's just the way that it is with God's stuff. It's God's wisdom hidden in plain sight. just right in front of us, but God chooses who's able to see it, who, who's never going to see it. So if you go to the six introductory videos at tarot03.com, I'll show you where they are. I'll try to get all this out of the way before we get started. My apologies. I keep opening up the wrong browser. Go down, go down the page here at the website and right here, these introductory videos start right there and then go to the channel. So this YouTube channel is my Christian channel and go back in time to watch the very first video, then the second video, two gospels, two churches, and could just keep coming up into present. And there's a paper um, breadcrumb trail laid out for you to be able to see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight. And get your hands on the mystery explained, and then everything that I'm showing you here is going to make good sense. So this is from Jill. She says, hello, I have a question that's been stirring in me for quite some time. It's about Stephen when being stoned to death, seeing Jesus standing at the right hand of God. So it's, it's one of the reasons that, Jill, that your email was chosen is because David and I were having a conversation about a related topic just yesterday. And Gary and I have been having topics about the incarnations and things over a period of time. That's what his recent articles are about. So this is all kind of gelling together for those who have been following these reports. So she lists these links. There's quite a number of them. And, but he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the, the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened up and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. So before we go any further, I want to click this link here, right here, and read some of these. This is the one that I just read right here. Behold, I see the heavens opened up. And then, but in Romans 9, I'm sorry, Romans 8, 34, who is condemned, Christ Jesus is the one who died, more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who inter, who is indeed is interceding for us. And you notice that the phrase here, that the name used here is Christ Jesus. And the majority of people, professing Christians, they believe Christ Jesus and Jesus Christ are the same thing, and they're not the same thing. And there's a video on this differences between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus. And this is a reference directly to Christ Jesus. That's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's an entire realm. But it's also the incarnation in us, Christ in us, is Christ Jesus. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit as a man, as with a spirit, soul, and a body. So there is a difference, but so there's a difference, and then there's things that are similar, and then there's things that are the same. That's going to sound a little bit complicated, but once we get through the diagrams, many more of you will be able to see what I'm talking about here. Ephesians 1, he that worked in Christ when he raised him up from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. It's actually above the heavenly places. Ephesians 4, started 8. If then... You have been raised with Christ. Seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. So you have seated, and you have standing. And you have seated, and you go back and forth. Seated, and it depends on, on context. depends on if it's Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus. So you're seeing there's a difference here. Jesus, the high priest, the better covenant. The one who is seated at the right hand of God. The throne of the majesty in heaven. So, you know, there's a number of them. He's at the right hand of God. He's seated at the right hand of God. He's standing at the right hand of God. But then there are references to the Son of Man. There's, some, there's references to the Lamb. There's substances to Jesus Christ, who is the Word of God. 
and it's easy to get confused, particularly whenever you want to make all those references into the same thing. Okay, so that's what's in this link here. This is Acts, our target verse for this reply, Acts 7, where he is standing, most certainly standing, at the right hand of God. And the reference to him is the, um, this is Jesus right here, but it's, there's also the, the um, Son of Man. See right here? And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open up the Son of Man. So there's two references here. One is to Jesus, and one is to the Son of Man. Because he can be referred to as the Son of God, or he can be talking about Christ Jesus. And it can, again, be a little bit confusing. But these are the specific references for Stephen, who is a member of the Kingdom Bride. As opposed to you and me, who are members of Christ's body, the body of Christ, and the Bride of Christ are two different things, two different dispensations, saved by different Gospels. Gospel of the Kingdom for the Bride, Gospel of the Grace of God for us. So if you've already gone through those videos, then you go through the two Gospels of the New Testament, then the two churches, then you see, ah, oh, man, there's a big difference. They have three baptisms of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and we have one that baptizes us into Christ. The Holy Spirit does that. Okay, so here's the beginning of my reply giving you a little background until we got to here. There appears to be confusion on the topic, sister. Stephen sees Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, standing at the right hand of God because he is our intercessor, our one mediator between God and men. Stephen sees Christ standing because he is working on this seventh day doing consecration priestly work as an intercessor that began with the Lamb of God, the Lord God, in Genesis 2 4. So let's just stop here for a second and let's start right here. These are the verses that I just quoted to you, the references. The one who condemns, who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is he who died, but rather was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. And David and I were talking about this yesterday. So this is a reference to Christ Jesus. I may have to pull up more diagrams. Just hold on just a second. And this is going to make a whole lot more sense. Okay, this is where it all begins. Genesis 1.1 In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. These are singularity expressions, expressions of spirit, blood, and water. This is the key to unlock God's true Bible code. These three witnesses, spirit, blood, and water, are throughout the whole Bible. Even the Bible itself is made in this image right here of spirit, blood, and water. It's the same image of a man with a spirit, soul, and a body. So this is the word right here. If you take this, I was just explaining this again to to David yesterday. You take this verse and you lay it out in tabernacle form, it becomes the first three verses of the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. See the circle around him? And the Word was God, which that's aorus tense, tense of perpetuity. And what that means is the Word and God are one forever, <laughs> which they are. They're one in God's infinite realm. But God had a need to recreate the earth again because this is a person this is a God in God's infinite realm who's been slain in the satanic rebellion and his name is Adam and that's the earth in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth so Lord God said word go over there and incarnate so that you can make Adam inside yourself again because God created Adam in the infinite realm as a God originally through his word now he's doing it again. So the, all the perfect ages. Read Ecclesiastes 1, start at 9. The ages that came before us. These are perfect ages of Genesis 1, 1. Age after age after age. No such thing as men. No such thing as angels. 
no such thing as women because they were all singularities and a perfect the entire universe was one thing everybody was created and everybody was perfect and nobody died but then to reproduce what happened in the infinite realm the earth was formless and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep that's what happened in the infinite realm death destruction okay so the light from here had to be sent here but in order for the word to be sent there the word had to be sacrificed it had to be broken this became heavens heaven and earth of Genesis 1 6 through 8 this light had to be sent there so God had to sacrifice his word so the Holy Spirit was pulled out like Eve was pulled out of Adam the Holy Spirit the water witness was the helper was pulled out that made the Father and the Holy Spirit then if, if you read Luke 1 35 power from on high overshadowed the Holy Spirit and the Holy Child the begotten the only begotten Son so the Father Son and Holy Spirit this becomes Father Son and Holy Spirit this becomes heaven seven and earth the light the Son the word incarnate from here was sent here to incarnate as the Lamb of God okay so this is Genesis 1 1 with the tabernacles opened up these are the three tabernacles opened up fully the man of God God who is God who was God who is to come Father Son Holy Spirit heaven seven and earth these are the three witnesses testifying from Revelation Revel, uh, Revelation 1 8 these are the three witnesses testifying from Matthew 28 19 many people think the Father Son and Holy Spirit are the Almighty and they're not they're the spirit witnesses testifying for heaven the Word Jesus Christ is the Word made flesh and the people get that confused they create an, and they make an idol out of the Son of God and make my father art in heaven the almighty and he's not this is the almighty right here it says it right in revelation 1 8 the almighty god who is god who was god who was to come it's right here so in revelation 1 20 i mean genesis 1 26 the speaker there is god who is speaking about making man in our image our image god who is is speaking about our image spirit blood water so once you see that all the lights come on and you realize heaven seven and earth see this is a man with a spirit soul and a body this is a man Christ Jesus first Timothy 2 5 the man Christ Jesus this is the man Christ Jesus right here heavenly man Christ Jesus he is the one mediator between God and men so references to Christ Jesus is this heaven of Genesis 1 1 incarnate so this is the light that incarnated into here to be the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world the earth he takes it away he's standing in the center of the throne doing his thing consecration work so the Lord God of Genesis 2 4 that begins working on the seventh day is the Lamb of God Lamb of God and the Lord God are the same thing when you make those connections everything that's spoken in the Bible makes perfect sense so now we're back over here this is one of the more complicated diagrams I wanted to show you those first so the Lord God of Genesis 2 4 is the Lamb of God standing in the center of the throne in Revelation 7 17 so this is the God's realm up here his infinite realm this is heaven the Father Son and Holy Spirit and this is the earth heaven seven and earth heavens the domain of the angels earth the domain of men heaven the domain of singularities singularity expressions whenever the angel and the man are put back together again so if you ever wonder why Paul says that we're gonna judge the world and the angels that's what he says first Corinthians what is it six two through two and three he says that because angels and men are two halves of the same singularity expression so whenever we're doing the judging actually God is judging from Christ in us then 
our angel half and our man halves already put back together again. And those that we're judging, the world and the angels, they're on their way to the same thing. So we're made in the Son of God's image, and then they're going to be made in the Son of God's image too. The Lord God is gathering us together as members of Christ's body to judge the world and the angels as an administration. Paul writes about it in Ephesians 3 and other places. Colossians 1, other places. So, the Lamb will sit upon the throne in heaven. See the Lamb of God? It's right here. See David? On the earth? Right here. On earth as it is in heaven fashion during the day of the Lord. That's coming up. So this is uh, Ezekiel 34. Just skip over there and see if I have these in order. Genesis 1. Right here. Therefore, see Ezekiel 34, start at 22. I will save my flock, and they will no longer be, be plunder, and I will judge between one sheep and another. Then I will appoint over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will feed them, and he will feed them himself, and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God. If you look at the shepherd, and you look at the, the tabernacle that's going to be spread over them, you can see he's doing exactly on the earth what the Lamb of God is doing in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. I will make a covenant of peace with them. And eliminate harmful animals from the land. That's going to happen during the day of the Lord that's coming up. They're going to live securely in the woods. They're not going to fear for anything. No ticks. No chiggers. Nothing. Like that. The day of the Lord that's about to come. The devil's going to be chained. 3,600 years. And for a little more than 3,000 of those years. It's going to be great. Until the devil's loosened at the end. Of what's characterized as the thousand years which is actually one black star orbit cycle okay in Christ Jesus at the right hand of God as the entire heaven realm is next to the infinite realm so you see this is the entire realm that I showed you the beginning God heaven and earth these are the individual components inside of that This is the diagram that I just showed you above. After the, after God, heaven and earth, this is the tabernacle laid open. So Christ and then Christ in you. Colossians 1.27 is Christ Jesus, not Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit as a man. So Jesus Christ is the Word made flesh walking around on the earth. He's at the right hand of God right now in the almost infinite realm. He was raised above all the heavens, seated at the right hand of God. And seated in, in, in the, the sense that that's his final resting place. That's the final place he's going. There's no higher, there's no lower, there's no left, right, up, down. His throne at the right hand of God is, the place, is his destiny. That's where his destiny is. So the, the intercessor between man and between God and men is Christ Jesus, the entire realm. So that's Christ Jesus, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit as a man. The one who speaks and testifies. For Christ Jesus is the only begotten Son. Just like the eagle, God who is, testifies for the Father, for the God who is, testifies for God to come and God who was the same way. All these blood, blood witnesses testify for the original singularity. Your soul is the place of judgment in your being, testifying for your spirit above and your body below. As if you are three selves, actually. Your soul, your spirit, and your body. As if there are three individuals. Your soul is the one that judges between your higher and lower selves. Those things are explained more in the book, in the Mystery Explained, as you get near the end there. Then, this is a look inwardly. Christ says that the heaven is in you. The kingdom, which he was teaching kingdom doctrine for kingdom disciples. So, from his perspective, the kingdom, for those that he was teaching, is within them. It's within us. This is the, um, the process I'm showing you here in this diagram and you notice the similarities spirit blood and water of what's going on inside of you 
and what's going on over here. So the hearing the word, the gospel, the spirit of the word, the faith of Jesus, and the Holy Spirit of promise, entering your soul through the first veil, like the priest enters the tabernacle. So the symbolism of the tabernacle and the temple and the priest going in and out between the veils and the burnt offerings and everything, and all is symbolizing what's going on inside of us when we obey the gospel. Then the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, see this, the, Holy, the um, Father dwells in our spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells in, like, like Paul says over and over again, in our mortal bodies. We're, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Well, the Son dwells in our soul. Spirit, soul, and body. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Then laying crossways, making the sign of the cross, you have the three witnesses of the Almighty. So God is in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Colossians 5, verse 19. Now this is the, the, the new man, new inner man inside of us. It's built up by reading the Pauline epistles. All of God's words for you, Pauline epistles are living and active. Like living bread builds up your new inner man inside so that you can have victory over the things of the flesh. So this is an explanation of what I just shared with you right here. The bottom line here is that Jesus Christ is the Word of God and incarnate in the incarnation of the Lamb of God standing in the center of the throne as high priest making intercession during the seventh day. Keep in mind that Jesus Christ is the prophet, the spirit witness, and the priest, the water witness, and the king, the blood witnesses. So he has three roles while testifying for the entire heaven. So the Son speaks for the Father and the Holy Spirit. Prophet, priest, and king. Therefore, the seeming confusion created by Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Son of Man, seated at the right hand of God and standing, is due to the Son of God carrying out his prophet, priest, king duties from the position of great power and authority at the right hand of Almighty God. Those receiving intercession see the Son of God as standing, well, like a, whole, like a high priest, at the right hand of the king. Those being judged see the Son of God seated upon his throne. So whenever what's being referenced in, the, in God's word is about judgment, then the, the Son of God is the king who is sitting in judgment. But whenever it's intercession, an intercessory thing, then he's standing at the right hand of God. So it's a context thing and it's a reference thing with reference to the group that the text is addressed to. So the Old Testament's a test is written to Israel. The Kingdom New Testament is written to the members of the Kingdom Bride. The Pauline Epistles are written to our personal mail from God to the members of Christ's body. Three primary dispensations households. So context really really matters. And sometimes you're getting the law in the Old Testament. Sometimes you're getting the law in Paul talks about the law and the law is throughout the Kingdom Epistles. and Sometimes it's kingdom doctrine. Christ is always teaching kingdom doctrine to kingdom disciples, members of the kingdom bride. So many pastors are saying, well, he's teaching us. No, he's not. He's teaching Israel. He came for Israel only. He told Peter, John, and James, do not go in the way of the Gentiles. Do not even go the way of the half-Jews, the Sumerians. Don't go to them. Go only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach saying, Repent, the kingdom is at hand, because it was for Israel only first. After they accepted it, then it was to go to the whole world, but they never accepted it. And the answer, what we're seeing for Stephen, ties directly to the rejection of that kingdom. I'm just about to get to here. Take me a little while to get there, but remember that some of you are babes, and you can only take the milk. Some of you, like Gary and others, 
they've been doing this for a while and they want the meat and my lessons are taught to help everybody so some are gonna to have to read it two or three or four times some will do that and not see the depth of what's going on until later in the timeline so the next question am I on the right line of thinking as to say that Stephen could only see him in the heaven heavens since he saw them open of the earthly realm because his sight would be only into that realm being of the elect the bride of Christ full of the Holy Spirit and one of the first preachers with a revelation of Jesus before his experience so you can see well, I can see that Jill you're more advanced than the average bear in Park Ranger I can tell by the phrases that you're using and knowing that you understand the meaning behind those phrases so you see the difference between kingdom and grace doctrine and that allows you to ask the better questions in the in the proper context so first what Stephen is witnessing is by the power of Almighty God there's only to back take a step back a little bit there's only one power and that's God that's it so for example the deluding influence I'm going to re reference here in a minute that second Thessalonians 2 start at 7 mystery of iniquity by the time you get to verse 10 the looting influence is sent by God there's only one power so if Satan's out there doing something the devil he's out there doing something there's only one power it comes through God that's the way it works so the looting in and whenever somebody is and I'm gonna say that in this down in my commentary here when somebody's deluded by the looting influence God sent that looting influence and they're deluded indeed there's some things that we people that we can help in our environment and there's some people we cannot help in our environment it took me years to be able to fathom the truth the essence of the truth of that so Stephen is witnessing is by is um, by the power of Almighty God God is using Stephen to represent the entire kingdom ride that will stand to the ages of the ages on the sea of glass so see this body of Moses right here see the lamb in the center of the throne these are the angels the members of the kingdom bride they can't see the angels on the opposite side it's like an invisible sea to them members of the lamb we can see it and we realize what's going on on earth has its heavens counterpart over here body of Elijah those that never see death they're the angels and whenever you get deeper into the lessons and you look at the types you're going to realize that Elijah is a skin for Adam and Moses is a skin for Eve I know it's very difficult Noah Moses Sarah Bathsheba Eve water witness signs all over them Moses name means drawn because Eve was drawn from the side of Adam that's the ultimate truth even though Moses was being drawn out of the Nile that's why Moses name means what it means whenever um, Moses wanted to see the Holy Spirit see the glory then the Lord God took Moses and pushed him inside the cleft of the rock a little crack and then he was withdrawn again just like he was withdrawn in Genesis 2 everything was being done again all those types all, they all mean something and 1 Corinthians 10 for example they were all baptized into the into Moses and in they drank this same spiritual drink all those water witness signs and Eve is mother of all living Genesis 3:20. all living all men the counterpart to that is Adam who testifies for all the angels take the men and the angels put them back together again and you have immortal souls so that's what was going on when Eve was taken out of man that was taken out of Adam from the very beginning and ultimately they're all put back together again Humpty Dumpty style so the sea of glass Peter John and James 
kingdom bride, they're going to provide intercession for all of the citizens of heaven to the ages of the ages, to the end. And their angel counterpart is going to be on the other side, opposite side, doing the things that they're doing for the angels on the other side. They go to the marriage supper of the Lamb at the end of every age, and then the the man part and the angel part are put back together again. They actually walk right into the Lamb and join us in Christ Jesus. Because the Lamb of God, like I said earlier, is the incarnation of Christ Jesus. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The entire, almost infinite realm. So this is just a picture of the Mount of Transfiguration. This is my beloved Son. Elijah, Christ, and Moses. Spirit, blood, water. These are the three witnesses of the garden. This is Christ, the Lamb of God, and Adam and Eve. This is the last. Adam and Eve and the Lord God are the first. Christ going on and on about the first is the last and last is first. It's all going to make sense when people see all of this happening and they realize this is Elijah, the body of Elijah. This is the body of Moses. You know there is a body of Elijah. It's true and it's real. It's the body of the angels. The body of Moses is talked about. Just mentioned it. 1 Corinthians 10. The body of Christ is mentioned too. And there's a missing part there. It's the body. If you look at the Mount of Transfiguration, you can see them. The body of Moses, the body of Christ, the body of Elijah. That's how God's word works. He gives you two of the three witnesses. And you're supposed to see the third one. In time, you're able to see it. There's a, there's God's mystery. Colossians 2, 2. That is Christ. And there's the mystery of Christ. Ephesians 3, 4 and 4, uh, Colossians 4, 3. There's a mystery of Adam, too. But it's not spelled out for you like the others are. But there's a spirit and a blood witness that are mentioned, the two witnesses. You're supposed to be able to identify the water witness, which is the body of Adam. Like the body of Christ. And then you realize there's a body of God, too, in the infinite realm. That's where we're gods. That's where we are all, we all know each other in God's infinite realm. And we're jockeying for position in the mountain of God. Some of us are on the high side. Some of us are on the low side. And some of us are making up the difference. We're ascending higher and higher in the mountain of God by putting all this together and helping those around us. God sees it and rewards us. And some of us are tearing those down around us rather than building them up and suffering loss because of it. So they, talking about the bride of Christ, they stand before the Lamb, the body of Moses at the right. They stand before the Lamb right here. Lamb, sea of glass, body of Moses. It's right there. Serve him, providing intercession for the citizens of heaven. God used John the Baptist, sent by God, to testify for my Father who art in heaven. See, here's the diagram, the prophecy mystery timeline. Here is the Father testimony, the Son testimony, the Holy Spirit testimony. John the Baptist, Christ, and then the Twelve, the Holy Spirit. Whenever you read the Bible, the Spirit that moved upon the surfaces of the water. See the the just mentioned that earlier. That the earth was made formless and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the surface of the water. That Spirit right there is the Helper. And there's a thread that weaves its way all the way through Scripture. From that Spirit to Melchizedek, the incarnation of the Holy Spirit as a man. Who made intercession for the Gentiles. He made it for Abram. Before there was any such thing as a Jew on the planet, Melchizedek was making intercession for men. Kings. They brought their stuff to the king, dropped it down. And then, in the tabernacle of the Holy Spirit, the Shekinah glory, the Holy Spirit, carried by, you know, Moses and the priests, and then into the temple. And then, Zacharias, the father of John the Baptist went into the temple and struck dumb and he carried the Holy Spirit out. And John the Baptist was baptized with that Holy Spirit from the temple in his mother's womb, Elizabeth. That Holy Spirit was passed on to Jesus Christ in the Jordan River and then sent down 
Problem he says, if I don't go, I can't send the helper. John 16, 7. And then on the day of Pentecost, that happened. And that Holy Spirit went with Peter, John, and James. And then the, the, the uh, gospel of the kingdom was rejected for the third time right here. There's a big slippery slope right there. So Stephen is representing the entire bride of Christ, full of the Holy Spirit, and killed with the hands of the Jews by the order of the Apostle Paul with letters from the Sanhedrin. So that is the, Stephen is being used as the bride of Christ to show that the kingdom bride is being cut off. Revelation 20 verse 4. So that beheaded there, that's the only time that word is used. And that is translated into beheaded, it's not beheaded. It is cut off. That's what's happening right here. The kingdom bride was cut off, the body of Christ was raised up. So when you get to Acts 3, you see the Apostle Paul is called out. He and Barnabas. And they are called out by the Holy Spirit. So you see the gift of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit and all that. But in those verses you see in that passage, the Holy Spirit is talking. He's saying, separate unto me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work that I have for them. That's where this dispensation of God's grace began with the steward. The slave put over all the rest of the slaves is the Apostle Paul. Over the body of Christ, just like Moses is the steward over those under the law. There's a steward, and that's Paul. We don't worship Paul any more than Israel worships Moses. But Moses, it was the instrument that was used. Paul is the chosen instrument of mine. The only person in the whole Bible that's characterized as the chosen instrument of mine when he was raised up on the road to Damascus. And he was given by revelation our gospel. Peter, John, and James didn't know about it. The gospel of the grace of God didn't know about it. They preached the kingdom. And Paul preached the kingdom too, because that was the only gospel in town at the time. It was by through revelation. Go to Galatians 2, start at 11. By revelation, there's made known to me the gospel that he preaches among the Gentiles. And that's the gospel of the grace of God. That's what this period is all about. The thing is, the prophets back here, they see into the day of the Lord very well. They didn't see anything inside this mystery time. So the, the pastors and ministers, preachers, Bible prophecy experts, they're talking about prophecies being fulfilled today. They're all wrong. All of them. These things of this period, the mystery, they're hidden in God. They were hidden in God to be revealed after God raised Christ from the dead. Then Paul was raised up. On the site of Stephen, things changed. And then on the road to Damascus, Paul's going in the middle of the day to kill, to get Jews. And he was struck down and then led by the hand and the scales fell from his eyes and it was a whole new deal after that. That started this dispensation of God's grace. This is a mystery time we're living in that contains the dispensation of God's grace. Dispensations are households. So Israel was rejecting the gospel of the kingdom for the third time. That's why Christ said, Blast me, the Holy Spirit says, you, you can kill the Son of Man, but you cannot reject it. The blast me, the Holy Spirit. The blast me of the Holy Spirit was the offering of the gospel of the kingdom for the third and final time. So they did what they did to John the Baptist, allow him to die in prison. They crucified Christ with their own hands. Crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. And they killed, they, well, let me rephrase that. They demanded his death. He was killed by the hands of the Jews using Pilate, the Gentiles. But Stephen, the Jews killed Stephen with their own hands. And then piled up their, the custom was, these uh, the Jews, they walked around with these garments, with these coats. The coats had their fam family emblem and these symbols. It said exactly who they were. And so Paul, he had papers from the Sanhedrin. He didn't have to bring witnesses. He just had to bring their coats. So when he went back with the body of Stephen and he had all these coats, these are the witnesses right here. They could just look at the coat and say, oh, this is from the family of this, and this is, oh, this is that, this is that. And he had the papers to do the deed in the first place, and then he had the witnesses. That's all Paul needed. Until the Lord God struck him, struck him down and then opened his eyes. Okay. 
Next question. And or is the image of the man Jesus actually standing in heaven of this earthly realm and simultaneously in the heaven word highest heaven realm? Okay. See, so, you know, you're pushing the envelope of where Gary is, Joe. And David's eyes are opening up on this too. That's what we're going through yesterday. Which I think reading what I've given to Gary and his questions, that's helping the rest of you guys to go, oh, and then understand that far and then asking more questions. So the answer is all the above. So whenever Christ says he's teaching his disciples about things that are happening on earth as it is in heaven, that's an incomplete phrase. That is a complete phrase for the kingdom bride at the time. But that is an incomplete phrase. There are three witnesses. You only got two there. The third witness is God's infinite realm. Things are on earth as they are in heaven as they are in God's infinite realm. Let's go back one over here. On earth as it is in heaven as it is in God's infinite realm. So take it all the way to the end. This is the only realm that's real where you and I are gods. This realm is created. In the beginning, God, see that word right there? Created. This is created and this is created. These realms are, this is a matrix inside of a matrix. Take a good look around, guys, because this is not even real. This is the only realm that's real. These realms were created for the purpose of judgment of the gods that are here for active participation in the satanic rebellion, either as victims or as perpetrators. Then it's about the restoration of Adam. Because the heavens, heaven, and earth is only one Son of God. The angels, the men, the, sing the singularity of souls, they're all members of his body. These are gods from God's infinite realm that incarnated inside of Adam with the members that were already created that God placed there on the day that Adam was created in the first place. So the six-day people that are here represent the members of Adam's body in God's infinite realm on the day he was made. The seventh-day people that are here are gods like Adam that were incarnated inside of Adam's body that interact with the six-day people. They interact with the members of his body that were already there. So just for an example, whenever the Europeans came to America and began killing the Indians, the Indians represent, you notice they're all RH positive, they all have dark hair, they're like the Chinese. They're all RH positive, they all have dark hair, beardless. Those are six-day people. They've been here millions of years. Seventh-day people have been here about, since the last deluge, about 12,500 years ago. So we are incarnated gods. We're the ones that are going to be judged for participation as a satanic rebellion. The six-day people aren't here to be judged. Not for the satanic rebellion. They're members of Adam's body. They were killed. They're all victims. Okay. So I'm looking at my time. It's approaching an hour. I have a long way to get. Well, I'm getting close to the bottom here. So, um, the incarnations. It's a little bit difficult to follow. Once you can see it, it makes things much easier to understand about God's Word. Okay? So, God and His Word are one in God's infinite realm. The only realm that's real. God and His Word are one. They're the same. God said, Word, go over here and incarnate. See, now heaven is the Word incarnate. That became Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Christ Jesus. Okay? Right here. Heavenly man, Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus incarnated into this heaven as the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God incarnated onto the earth as Jesus Christ. He's the Word made flesh. Guess what? The Lamb of God is the Word made flesh. Guess what? Christ Jesus is the Word made flesh. The Word is here with God. He's been there. He's just fine. God and his word are one and the same. These are all incarnations. So then, when Jesus Christ died, just like the sacrifice of the word had to happen, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So Jesus Christ did what had already been done. 
to some of the references that you see to Christ being being sacrificed, the Word being sacrificed. This is Christ Jesus, heaven being divided, just like the earth was made void. The Father, the Word was made void too. The result is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So imagine what happens at the end of all this whenever the only begotten Son enlarges with each age. He enlarges, he enlarges, he enlarges, he enlarges. He overshadows the Father and the Holy Spirit until he's the Word again. That's how he started off, as the Word. The Son is going to enlarge until the Father doesn't exist anymore in the Holy Spirit. The same is with your spirit and your body. Right now you can see the physical body. You can't see the spirit, can you? Can't see it. The day is going to come when we only see the soul. We're only going to be able to see the soul. We can't see the spirit and we can't see the body. The soul is going to continue to overshadow the spirit and the body until we're all living souls again, just like we were during the perfect ages of Genesis 1-1, the ages that were before us. So the, the reason that for the science people, the reason that relativity and quantum, quantum physics, the reason they don't, they don't reconcile the science of the small, quantum physics, the science of the large, relativity, they don't reconcile because the universe is broken. They do reconcile in heaven. They don't reconcile in the earth. So, to try and define our universe as the earth is like trying to define the family as a woman. It doesn't work. Go ahead, try to define the entire family as the woman. That's what it's trying, that's what you're trying to do whenever you're saying the universe is like what you're observing in the earth. It's never going to work. But it does work in heaven. You see, you have the overlapping. These, this is the singularity expression. So the science of the small in heaven and of the large, they reconcile. But they do not reconcile perfectly yet. But it's really close. Because creation has to be remade. The new heaven and new earth. Then there's going to be another new heaven and new earth. Every time it's remade, this blood witness testifies more perfectly for the original singularity expression. It's going to take us time to get there. There's lots of ages coming. Like Paul writes about Ephesians 2, start at 4 down to 7. So that in the ages to come, there's more. There's many ages before us. Ecclesiastes 1, start at 9. And many ages to come after us. Okay. So then I'm digressing here a little bit in this explanation and explaining the lion, the eagle, and the bull, three witnesses of the Almighty. God to come, the prophet, is like the lion. The eagle sees all things all right now. God who is. And the bull, the bullock, that's the bullock you do not approach from behind. He will kill you. This is the, this is God who was. This is God to come. It's like trying to grab a a lion by the teeth in the, by attacking him in the front. You can't do that. You can't come up from the bull from behind. The eagle sees it, everything. Those are the three witnesses testifying for the Almighty from Revelation. So the eagle is the one that's doing the speaking. He's in the current time and space. He's in the present all the time. He knows all things present right now. Then John the Baptist, who's another skin for Adam, like Elijah and Joshua and Abraham, David. Therefore, if you're following David is doing on the earth what the Lamb is doing in heaven and what Jesus Christ is doing at the right hand of God. That's from... Oh, that's from the first diagram above. Okay. So, that's what I was trying to share in answering the question about Jesus Christ standing and sitting, prophet, priest, and king, it depends on the role and the context, the audience. So this is uh, the question about the skipping sound. And that has to do with the, the 35 podcasts of the Mystery Explained from 2012 that John put together. Then she's, she's uh, this is Jill. And she's trying to share 
Oh, first of all, she wants to know about the rewards. What exactly are these works that I'm that I am to do for the rewards? Just listen to the spirit's direction. She's been quiet for so long, except for giving me your research. And so, works come in various forms: personal study, the three witness testimony patterns, God's word. But then, the way God works is through His word. You can study personally behind closed doors forever and ever and ever, and you're only going to go so far. At some point, you have to step out of that. You're going to reach a plateau, and it's going to seem like forever unless you have a change of mind and repent. Because what your duty is, is to help somebody else to see it. So when you start sharing for somebody else, you're going to listen to their questions. Like I'm listen, looking at your questions right now, Joe. And then you're going to have to go do some research to find the answer. And as you're going to do the research to find their answer on the way, God's going to open up a door for you. You're going to go, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. So you're getting everything together for, in my case, Jill. And then Lord God's opening up a door for me over here. Same thing's going to happen to you guys. You're going to see so much and not be able to grow. It's because you're trying to feed yourself and you're going to be fed by feeding others. It's just the way that it works. I can tell you from doing this for a long time. Now, I try to share your info with the few, and I'm able, but to no avail. Don't be surprised by that. We're coming to the end of this dispensation of God's grace on the earth. So, those that are the gifted members of Christ's body, the big ones like Paul and Barnabas and Titus and those, they lived 2,000 years ago. So, take your pyramid and turn it on its side. Christ is the top. Paul, Barnabas, and Titus, they lived 2,000 years ago. Now you're at the base of the pyramid. Lord God's about to gather us up. Things are going to get terrible here on the earth. He's going to gather us up. But the base of the pyramid, you have the common stones. The common stones, there's more of us, but not the sharpest, well-cut, well-edged stones. So even those that are members of Christ's body that are saved are not able to grasp the things. If this was shared with with uh, Barnabas and Titus and those back 2,000 years ago, they'd be catching it a lot quicker. So there's a pyramid in heaven. Those that are at the near the top are the ones that incarnated before. We're the ones that are here at the bottom. So that's one, that's one aspect to be able to realize. Then, remember that we're, and it's not even mentioned here, we're shrouded in a cloak of darkness right now. So for ages and ages, these three witnesses, spirit, blood, and water, and testifying and helping others and things, extremely, extremely important. Extremely important. Blessed is every son of God that God lets see this stuff. All the way to the end of the ages. But more blessed are those of us that can see it on this side of the veil, walking through the valley of the shadow of death with the devil everywhere, all around us, and in everyone, all around us. Lies, deception, mixing of the two gospels, mixing of the church doctrine, kingdom and grace, blood and water, all mixed together, it is difficult. The truth is an extremely rare commodity. And when you get a little bit of it, a little taste of it, and then you see, a, like with the Mystery Explained, a method, a manual on how to extract it, that is extremely valuable. thing is, most people, the Mystery Explained, they're looking at it, and they don't know what it is. They just can't tell what it is yet. And we're running out of time. So you can share this information with others and, and God, God help you. God, we're doing the best that we can. Most of the people that are in our environment are indoctrinated. We're not going to be able to help them. Most of them are blinded by the deluding influence, forced to believe what is false. We're going to be like Paul. We're going to be persecuted. They can't see it. And they're even jealous because they can't see it. And the devil is inspiring them to persecute and work against us. Then is the Holy Spirit responsible for my good works? Is it prompting? Is it promptings I am to look for? Or is it just all about inner growth and being transformed to his image? The Holy Spirit is the helper. of God's word incarnate in our mortal bodies. No, 
You were created in Christ Jesus for good works. You and I are responsible for our good and bad work in the Spirit and in the flesh. Sons of God have the power to call upon the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit incarnate within us for achieving our goals. We have access to the power. It's closer to us than our own breath. God Almighty is inside of you and He's inside of me. Most of the time when you're listening to me, it's just me. Sometimes when you're listening to me, it's Christ in me. And sometimes it's God in Him. And God knows the difference. Even the secrets of men are going to be judged where we're about to go. Even the secrets. And God's going to judge between all of us. And she writes, this is Jill, I've been intuitive and sensitive all my life and pray that the intuitive gift is from God and not the enemy. I have not had any promptings lately. I am still asking about how to prepare for mayhem with no answers, except to hide myself away a little while until the indignation passes. That won't help in Mad Max situation, though. My reply, God speaks to us through His living and active Word, incarnate in us, Christ in you, and incarnate in His Holy Scriptures. So the Spirit that's in you is communing with the Spirit in the text. It's a communion that's going on. We keep our minds on it, our hearts focused on the things above where Christ is, seated in the right hand of God. That's our goal. And then the Spirit and the Word of the Word, read the Pauline epistles, Romans to Philemon, Romans to Philemon. I've done that hundreds of times. If you just read two verses a night and you do it every night or one chapter a night, you're gonna that's you're gonna go through it. You know, a few years you go through it a hundred times. The New Testament. And that's the bread of life for your soul, building you up, building you up, building you up. And then God brings opportunity to you. When you get stronger and mighty, the Lord God is gonna bring opportunity for you to use those muscles and to make them even stronger and to have rewards on the other side. If you're not applying yourself, you're not strengthening yourself, don't expect God's going to put you in a situation that's going to get you harmed. If you're going to be remain weak and feeble, you don't really understand kingdom um, the difference between kingdom doctrine and grace doctrine, then don't expect the Lord God's going to open doors that's going to make put you at risk. So it's... Um, Build yourself up, build Christ up in you, and then God's going to open up the doors. If you have it in your heart to help others, the Lord God's going to open up the door, and you build and you build yourself up, make yourself strong. God's going to open doors so you can help others, and then it becomes a like a snowball rolling downhill. It just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and more powerful. Then um, she went to church recently, and you believe it? The first woman's Bible study. The topic was the Bride of Christ. So I'm LOLing her. Laughing out loud, you're in the wrong assembly. They're mixing kingdom doctrine and grace doctrine without knowing the difference, which distorts the wisdom given him. And I did stop reading this. All these verses are pulled up. It's an hour and I'm an hour and nine minutes, an hour and now. Yeah. This is the servant David. Oh. You notice David's called the prince in Ezekiel 34 at thir in verse 37, chapter 37. And my servant David will be king over them and they will be have one shepherd. They'll walk in my ordinances and keep my statutes and follow them because they're going to be written in their hearts. This is the new earth of Revelation 21, 1 when he's the king. And my servant will be their leader forever. So he's going to be remade with each age, and he's going to live from the beginning of the age to the end of the age. And the kingdom at the, each age is going to be larger and larger and larger on the earth until the ages of the ages, the whole creation will be made and the whole earth will be one kingdom. Then this is the thrones, the four living creatures. So there's actually three living creatures. One of them is the one with the face of a man. That's Christ. So John is looking straight through. He's seeing. He's looking through the earth realm, through the heaven realm, to the infinite realm, and he's seeing the the living creature that has the face of a man. That's Christ. The th other three 
the um the lion, the eagle, and the bullock, those are the three witnesses of the Almighty. This is the lamb that's in the center of the throne. Start at verse 14, and you'll see those that came out of the Great Tribulation, the 144,000. They're standing on the sea of glass with Peter, John, and James. So the late-range bride hooks up with a, the, the early-range bride from James 5, 7. This is um, John the Baptist sending my messenger who will clear the way before me, and the Lord whom you are seeking will suddenly come to his temple. This is exactly what happened with John the Baptist and Jesus Christ. And then the Holy Spirit started on the day of Pentecost. These are the three baptisms of the kingdom. One is the one that they already had, they had John's baptism. Did you receive the Holy Spirit? They said, on the contrary, we'd never even heard of the Holy Spirit. And they were, what were they baptized into? And he says on John's baptism. See, that's the baptism in water for the repentance for the remission of sins, that's from the Father. Then they heard about the Lord Jesus, and then they had hands laid on them for the Holy Spirit, and it was one, two, three. That allowed them to pass from the outer court to the Holy of Holies through the two veils of the temple. This is ceremonial. It's happening on earth as it is in heaven for each kingdom disciple when it happens. No kingdom disciple has been saved by the gospel of the kingdom for almost 2,000 years. It's going to happen again when Elijah returns for the restoration of all things. Then they're going to preach the gospel of the kingdom to the ends of the world. Matthew 24, verse 14. This gospel of the kingdom will go to the whole world and then the end will come. That happens 3,600 years from now. And this is um, Acts 13, whenever the Holy Spirit is speaking. It says, while they were serving the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, you know what? Look throughout the whole Bible and trying to find a place where it says the Holy Spirit said. Set, up, set Barnabas and Saul apart from um, apart for me for the work which I have given them. That's the dispensation of God's grace. That's the gospel of the grace of God. That's starting the body of Christ. Separate from the bride of Christ. This is the beheaded verse, check Revelation 20, verse 4. This is the overshadowing of the, the power from on high, the Father over the Holy Spirit, three witnesses of the Spirit, blood and water, same thing. We all must come before the judgment seat of Christ, so each one can receive, be, receive compensation for his deeds done through the body, accordance to what he's done, whether good or bad. Oh, I'm running a race and running it to win. That's my goal. Real important, when you read the mystery explained, this is dissected just about word for word, repeatedly. It, um, I have learned a secret. It, it, in the New Testament, it denotes not the mysterious. That's not what the, the Greek term means. But that which being outside the range of unassisted natural apprehension can be known only by the divine revelation. It is made known in a manner and at a time appointed by God. And to those only who are illumined by his spirit. In an ordinary sense, the mystery implies knowledge withheld. And in scriptural significance, truth revealed. Hence, the terms especially associated are made known, manifest, revealed, preached, understand, and dispensation. So these are things that were hidden in God that were revealed later. And that's what the mystery is all about. And that's what's the wisdom given him. When, Paul, when Peter's Warning, giving his warning. He's warning about the wisdom given him and not distorting it. This is the watering that we do. God causes the growth. So I can't cause the growth in you. I can only give the seeds and the water. God has to cause the growth. And this is the this is the helper that sent. This is um, whenever I made the statement that we are saved, created in Christ Jesus for good works not by good works. We're saved by obeying the gospel. Now this is the one that I wanted to read to you. Therefore, beloved, this is Peter writing to the bride of Christ. He says, Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found spotless and blameless by him at peace and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, 
wrote to you, as also in all of his letters, speaking to them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which the untaught and unstable distort, as they do the rest of the scriptures, to their own destruction. Now that's what's happening, is they're mixing, talking about those blinded by denominationalism. They're all around us. They're mixing kingdom doctrine and gate grace doctrine, defiling the wisdom given him, the mystery that was given to Paul. Our gospel is according to the revelation of the mystery. Behold, I tell you a mystery we want about the rapture that's coming up. People don't understand it because the looting influence has told them something else and they will not change their mind ever because the looting influence, the looting influence won't let them. This is, this is it right here, mystery of lawlessness. It says, and with all this, the deception of wickedness for those who perish because they did not accept the love of the truth so as to be saved. For this reason, God will send upon them a deluding influence so they will believe what is false in order that they may, they all may be judged who do not believe the truth but took pleasure in wickedness. So that's why there's 20,000 kinds of professing Christians and there's one truth. Looting influence has them by the nose, dragging them around and they can never wake up. Looting influence has them. This is the Ephesians 2 showing you that in the ages to come God might show us the boundless riches of his grace. And this is um, the battle that we fight. Strengthening ourselves in the Lord, putting on the full armor of God, realizing that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against powers, against world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. That's where, that's where the real evil is. Okay, now, oh, she's, um, she's asking me, I certainly do not want these people going to hell for being lied to, but yet I'm not confident enough to go against the grain at this time. And because she's just, she's, um, I am just relearning. She asked me if I have any suggestions and I, yes, I have suggestions. Run, run as fast as you can. Use God's word and the mystery explained. That's the, the mystery explained is blue, has a blue cover for a reason. It's a water witness. It's a helper. God's word is the, Spirit witness. And then you're going to create a red folder. The instructions are all in the mystery explained. It's going to expand. And it could become larger than both the Bible and the mystery explained. And it, it um, that testifies to Christ in you growing to maturity. You're just learning to swim yourself and not yet able. You don't have the strength to try and rescue others. You can't be a lifeguard if you just learn to swim. That's what it boils down to. So whenever you see those that are blinded and they're being blinded by their, their church leadership and they, the people want to follow them no matter what you say, you can go in there and make waves and they're going to saw your head off. They're going to make you pay and you're not spiritually ready yet. You're, you don't have your legs under you yet. And this is the, so I didn't write a word for God for three years, did not understand the mystery of iniquity. So you give me this stuff to share and then you blind people from seeing it. It's not fair. Three years, not one word. I wouldn't write it. I was never going to do it again. But then I realized, uh, that's the way the mystery of iniquity works. That's the antithesis of the mystery of Christ. Most of those around us are worthy of the black star coming and destroying them. They're worthy of that. It's like in the days of Noah. They were worthy of that. We can't make them worthy if they're not. And if they're blinded by deluding influence, they're already baptized into the body of the Antichrist. We cannot save them purest intentions of the world will never save them. You can talk all day long and they're not, the, this, God's word is going to bounce right off of them. They have their own beliefs. It was given to them by deluding influence. So you can wait three years and be angry about it or you can say, oh, I see the light on that. I wish I didn't, didn't waste three years having to learn that lesson. But now I have. And so if you're going to write to me, then you're going to ask questions about the mystery explained. And what you, I hope you won't do is ask me about all the dominations. Well, they believe this and that, so why this and all? No. We don't have time for that. They're, 
I'm not in the business of fixing broken doctrine anymore. Did that for years and years and years and years. No, it's a waste of time. They're never, you can't convince them. They're never going to see the light on that. So the thing to realize is, like with my ministry for you, there's only a few of you guys that see it. And whenever one of you sees it, it's generally you're the one in your congregation that sees it. There's not a whole other group of you that are around you. You're by yourself. Like I was for decades with this stuff. And so the fact that you can see it, God bless you, brother in Christ. But I know 100% for sure that I'm here for the few, very few. The many are on the wide road to destruction, and they're just trampling all around us and all over us and everything. So if you can see it, then God bless you. I'm gonna, I hope you'll subscribe, and, and I'll help you with the questions, just like with Jill and Gary and others. Check out Dr. Jason Dean. He has a lot of good stuff. I really like him. He's going to interview me on The Mystery Explained eventually. And then, small denomination silver. You're going to be self-sufficient. The dollar's going to collapse. Have some small denomination silver. This is the guy I recommend. While you can still get it, it's shipping in like three days. And there's information on the biological weapon down below. I don't talk a lot about on this channel. And that's it. Appreciate your support very, very much. Get more information right here at terrell03.com. Watch the videos down in the scripture section. If you want a, a autographed numbered author's copy of The Mystery Explained, then you can get that by clicking right here. Overseas and local here inside the United States. And I get that sent to you. You can get a cheaper copy by going to Amazon, like I showed you before, there's a link here. There's a link here. Right here. Amazon.com. You can click right there and go check that out. And that's it. Appreciate your support very, very much again. You have more information right here at terrell03.com and over here at substack.com. Some of these articles are geared toward, uh, see like this one, Interview on the Mystery Explained coming up so there is tidbits of information here this is not just about black star not but just about biological weapon or it's a combination of everything good place to send people to get there's just a great body of knowledge here if you have the resources hope you'll support me here and remember you get a free subscription to the mystery explained and access to all the newsletters going back to 2019 are in there in the dropbox folder for you that's it. Appreciate your support again. Get more information right here at terrorzero3.com, and I'll see you on the next mystery report.